Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you all for having me this evening. I thought I'd start with an older poem of mine. It's called Hook. All this was noted previously. We think of a moment and it arrives, a stride, taking in all apex, deepest darks, lengthens, heaping outcomes upon leanings toward, deriving deserved delights from sheer bloody mindedness. Today, because I can visualize the never stepped in river twice, because disassembled machines are constantly reassembling their parts, because when doom dictates chaos comes to destroy the form forged from our meeting, we have already turned into something else. I believe in you, permanence through leaving off eternity in transit. All this was scribbled in tomorrow's journal, the moment breeds a thought and departs. Messengers gather with gifts. Cupped hands release themselves in prayer. Slants of sun dust slow down the strut of fate. Today, because I do not know what could now be in vain because sheer bloody mindedness is opening a closed way, because no way is ever crossing itself out, because the dance of sparkling swords around skulls becomes so stirred up, there is no wall too barbed to be scaled, no once sewn seam unstuck between our end and this begin. I believe in you, hardened horizon, acceleration of entropy. All this was dreamed up in last night's little death. The moment forgetting all thought returns, surfaces shine up to shimmer, inflate the inherent light limits. Levers live love to pinnacles impossible, bone knits a hood of meat as a meaning. Today, because I can, I dissect texture. Because I can, I carve a path through stone, drown needless objects down a secret river, flick the first switch, Invite the flicker of first shadow to lengthen into gloaming. No dark could ever deny us our glowing because I believe in you, field that grabs me from behind, the hook of what's already become. I was thinking about this week and I was thinking about spring and the spring equinox and everything blossoming and I thought of E.E. E. Cummings, who was a poet I hadn't thought of for a while, but as soon as you think of spring and love, you kind of think of him. So I thought I'd read to you from uh, one of his poems. Spring is like a paps hand, which comes carefully out of nowhere, arranging a window into which people look while people stare, arranging and changing, placing carefully there a strange thing and a known thing here, and changing everything carefully. Spring is like a perhaps hand in a window, carefully to and fro, moving new and old things, while people stare carefully, moving a perhaps fraction of a flower here, placing an inch of air there, and without breaking anything. This poem's a fairly new poem. Um, it's from an upcoming collection which I haven't quite gotten around to publishing yet. It's called Each Line. Compare and contrast. The reach of a pelican's neck. Constant comforting green. Stillness against this roadkill crow. Decomposing faster than you are from birth, falling, dropping out of sky. Each line furthering the former. Disregarding ending, racing endlessly towards towards. You grab a stick and say forest, Eden. Use it as a warding rod against the lines, writing out, suggesting it was in initially. A dog, perhaps three-headed, certainly alarmingly large, grows tired of chasing it, blocks the door you can't see, though you sense it entirely. Not allowing, never allowing passage until passage is all that is allowed. This is merely afternoon, the blurt of a blowfly against gauze, those intersecting lines crossing in, falling over fragments for the bare brain to bear witness to, begin to seek to name. Crow against dog, green against pelican, the drive on things to drop out of sky in neat or messy lines, sigh, name themselves, stick or Eden. Okay, I'm going to read a couple now from my book, Incidental Complications, which was published with the help of the Poets' Union. This is a title poem. It's called Incidental Complications. Oops. A feather and a hammer fall at the same rate on the moon. 
There are two. Somehow this is important division. We shall name the feather he, the hammer she, though there are any given splodge of particle dust. Through all this star picketing off one from the other, the world is, after all, an interconnected whole. Say they were on the moon, these two. The seeming difference in weights of heart, her hammer, his feather, would lack consequence. On Earth, a resistance in the air is doing the damage, something they are born into an incidental complication. This simple turn of events is given far too much importance. It drains what is essentially them, a togetherness, out. Yet see him approach her, sidestepping genetic spectres, a relic of light from some dead celestial body, biting his own finger, the only available response to all this here and now. Yet watch her astronaut crescendo through the here and now to the fact that remains. Most everything the writer seeks to reveal concerns this non-linear system, refers to a pact made between these divisions to somehow reach the absolute, via whichever polypeptide chain suggests itself. The interconnected whole must equal the sum of its parts, the combined weights of their hearts as they fall through, endlessly through, oh so gradually, and because they must, thinnest space, his feather, her hammer, at the same rate, must equal, must equal, must they be on the moon? <laughs> okay, this is the last poem I'm going to read. It's, begone, it's called Begone Theory of Everything, Fall Far From Me, Ultimate Reality of the Universe. <laughs> Although you have a hide, something winsome se seeps slowly through. What keeps it in generally now sets it free specifically. It's a herd thing, recapitulated, an alarm cuckooing. No doubt you forgot you owned it. And it sings to mine, and we're in love, delineation and other hazards loom. But for now, in the silent suspension of this starburst, pleasantries and distraction, leaping fish dissolving fingertips. I read today that dark matter emits light. Information has been thought to skulk out of dark holes, and the universe is only 2D. Case in point, it was once thought that what we think we are, we are. Now, even the mind is in the mind. I hear you say, does that mean that I am not responsible for my own body's weather? That we are not enamoured? I hear my reply. Irradiated starbursts too close to our teetering system further reveal our fragility. So kiss me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.